stand and turn and face across. We welcome you uh, to the second Sunday at Advent, a, a celebration like every Sunday of God's love that comes to us in Christ Jesus. Uh, it's an even more special Sunday because we are welcoming our uh, bishop. Uh, bishop Suzanne Delahunt is here, uh, and uh, she will be preaching the word for us today and uh, sharing, us, sharing with us the good news. We are in the midst of Advent, and we've got, um, we're going to start with the joyful Advent hymn, hymn 250. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I missed my call to worship. Kay's up there patiently waiting. Open up your bulletins, and it's on the first page. It's on the first page, right at the top. Kay's going to sink through this uh, beautiful line once, and then we'll, we'll join her. Now we sing him. Find all the liturgy for today's service in your bulletin. And it begins with our apostolic greeting. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up in our hearts, Lord God, a way to your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Could a couple of the children come forward for a children's sermon? Come on. Clara, Lillian, come on, guys. Hey, Ollie. How you got the tie on? That looks sharp. Good job. Come on over here. Oh, look at your boots. Look how nice looking. <clears throat> All right. Today, our bishop is going to talk about being in the wilderness. Do you, do you boys and girls know what wilderness is? What's wilderness? Yeah, okay, so it's going to be outside. Is it, is it like, uh, anyone else have another guess? A lot of times we think of wilderness as being woods, really thick woods, but it doesn't have to be. Wilderness can be any place that feels kind of desolate and alone. So when they talk about wilderness in the Bible, they didn't have real thick woods in that area. So usually the wilderness was desert that they're talking about. Anyone been in the desert? There's no tree, not a lot of trees out there. It doesn't look like a big woods. Okay? So it's any place where we're feeling alone. And so we use wilderness as a way of saying sometimes we feel alone in this world. And we can feel alone in this world even when we're around a lot of other people. Once, when I was your age, I was at a, a department store, a big downtown department store in the 1960s when I was your age. They don't have those big department stores downtown anymore. And, and it was Christmas time, and I was holding on to my mom's hand, and I looked up, and the woman's hand who I was holding on to wasn't my mom. And it was a crowded department store, but I felt really alone, like I was in the wilderness, huh? Because that's scary, isn't it, when you lose your mom in a store? And you know what I did? 
I didn't cry, at least I don't remember crying. I probably actually did cry, but I don't remember crying. I remember that my mom promised if I just asked for her when I needed her, she'd come. So I stopped and I said, no, I can just ask for my mom and she'll find me. And my mom happened to be right behind me and she found me. So I trusted my mom's promise when I was scared in the wilderness. And that's what we do. When we're scared in the wilderness, we trust God's promise to find us and to be with us. And that's the good news. So today's candle that we're going to light is the promise candle. Last week we lit the hope candle. Today we're going to light the promise candle. Who wants to light my candle? Oh, look at that hand. Shoot right up. Okay, Abby. Come on. Bring him over here. Abby's our trained professional here. There. Okay, you grab that. Got to hold on to it. And you got to can you get you got it up? Okay, get it up there. There we go. Don't like yeah, this one right here. This blue one. No, no, this one. <laughs> this one right there. Get back. Okay, now pull the end up. Pull the end up. Here, Abby, give him a hand here. You got it? Ooh, you're close. You're close. Okay, one. Whew! Let's get the other one. Ah, oh, that was easier, huh? Good job. You want to blow it out? You want to blow it out? Oh, yeah. I, I, I only got... Oh. <laughs> Let's say a prayer. Thank you, God, for promising to be with us. Help us trust that promise, especially when we're in the wilderness. Amen. All right. Thanks, boys and girls. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty has paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up, get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, says to Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes in with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and is recomposed before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second book of Peter. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but he is patient with you, not wanting any perish, but all to come to rep repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. 
since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But, in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also, our beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him. The word of the Lord. Stand as we welcome the gospel this morning. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace be with you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. First of all, I want to thank Pastor Carl for the invitation to be with you today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Suzanne Darcy Dillahunt. I am bishop. And it's amazing as I get into more and more congregations, um, especially in central Ohio, I actually know people in congregations. This morning, I was really surprised to see um, Dave Long. He and I um, were confirmed together, known him since fifth grade. Um, so that was kind of a surprise. Um, also, Kay, um, we, we've known each other for a very long time. Pastors here and professors, um, even members of uh, one of the congregations that I served. So in the Lutheran family, we're all related. Um, so I am very happy to be uh, here with you. Thank you for what you do here as members of Messiah in your work in the community and your proclamation of the good news. We know that Advent is a time of preparation. We prepare for Christmas, but it's also a time for new beginnings a time of wandering in the wilderness, and a time to see and experience the good news of the coming of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, in God's grace and love. Messiah Lutheran Church, 
How are you the embodiment of God's love here and now? How are you the proclaimers of the good news? And how are you John the Baptist? Advent says to us, wake up, get ready, because there's something hopeful and spectacular about to happen. The good news is about to enter into our lives and into our world, and Mark's opening account in the Gospel, working with John the Baptist, he gets right to the point. Mark tells us that the beginning of the good news, the promise of the coming of Jesus, an arrival that will change everything, and it is announced by John who appears in the wilderness. Now, John is a weird little man, wearing weird clothing and has a weird diet. And he talks about and yells in the wilderness that something more is coming. It's no accident at the time of that announcement that a new beginning is about to happen right there in the wilderness. As we read this passage from Mark, we ask, why does Mark use the imagery of the wilderness? Why is it important for us to know what John was wearing or eating? Who cares? But there is a message here in all of that detail. John's wild appearance actually reinforces the importance of his location in the wilderness. The image of the wilderness is not a negative for Mark. Instead, that wilderness reminds us that it's precisely into the wilderness, into my wilderness and into your wilderness, that the good news of Jesus gets announced and takes root. John the Baptist prepares the world for Jesus' coming. No fanfare, no embellishment, just plain and simple. Mark tells us the beginning of the good news, the promise of the coming of Jesus, an arrival that will change everything. So wake up and get ready for the life-changing Jesus. Now, we all love new beginnings because every one of us has a wilderness. What's your wilderness today? What are you hoping for in this Advent season. We're called to see beyond our wilderness into the promise of hope, the hope that we find in Christmas, in Jesus. And Advent gives us just a little glimpse of that new beginning. Wilderness is a place where the message of hope and the seeds of new beginning begin to take root and grow. In the wilderness, God's redemptive history opens up. Just as the Israelites fled into the wilderness to begin a new life as a free people, so John baptizing's activities invites those who come to see him to experience a repentance from brokenness and a new beginning. Now, some of you may have heard this story before, and I heard it when I was driving around a couple of weeks ago. It's about Henry Ford. There was a man who worked for the Ford Motor Company uh, and who over a period of time borrowed tools and other automotive parts. Somehow he smuggled the tools and parts home and gained quite a collection. It was against company policy but everybody did it, and the management kind of turned a blind eye. Now, this man had a change of heart. A change took place in his life. You see, for the first time in his life, he heard the Christmas story. Someone was talking to him about the good news of Jesus Christ coming to us as a baby, and something in him changed. He experienced God's love like he had never experienced anything else before, and he believed. He, was belie he believed and was baptized. 
and made a new beginning in his life. So on the Monday after his baptism, he gathered up all of the tools and all of the auto parts and dumped them all in his truck, drove them to work, and presented them to his boss with confession and a request for forgiveness. His boss was so overwhelmed by the honesty of this one employee that he got in touch with Henry Ford himself, who was in Europe, visiting one of the plants. After explaining the entire event in detail, Ford, as legend has it, responded by saying, let's dam up the Detroit River and baptize the entire plant. A new beginning. Moving from wilderness the wilderness of sin and despair and loneliness to the good news of Jesus Christ. That's what Advent prepares us for as we come into the light of Christmas. In the wilderness of our lives, God speaks a word of hope in Jesus. No matter how far into that wilderness we've strayed, no matter how distant God seems when the terrain of our lives seems dusty, dry, and desolate, God welcomes those who turn back, who repent. Wake up. Wake up because God is a God of new beginnings. So brothers and sisters in Christ here at Messiah, it is through the work of confession, the power of repentance, that the wilderness of our lives begin to reveal new beginnings for you and for me. And how great is that? This is the message. Jesus is the beginning of the good news that God is unleashing in your wilderness. It's time to wake up and realize that God in Jesus Christ wants a relationship with each of us, not because we deserve it, but because God loves us so very much. In my first congregation that I served in Springfield, we had day camp. It was a summer program, and Sarah lived in the neighborhood. She came to church because of day camp. She came from a family where there was very little love. The wilderness of criticism, fighting, ridicule, and violence were her everyday life. No one ever said to her, I love you, or I'm sorry, or forgive me. Imagine that kind of a life. She didn't want to live there anymore. When Sarah discovered that God had a new beginning for her through faith in Christ, she began to act differently at home. She would stop in the middle of a fight and ask to be forgiven. She would say, I love you, to her mom, and then began hugging her family. She began returning blessings for curses, compliments for ridicule, forgiveness when wronged. In this story of new beginnings, over a period of two years of giving blessings to her parents and siblings, the whole family encountered the transforming good news of Jesus. So here we are, halfway through Advent. So what? What difference does it make for you? As we continue in our Advent journey to Christmas, I want you to think about this. What would happen if every time we see a candle or a Christmas light this season, we let them remind us of the one who has come into this world as the light of the world? That might lead us to seek to be the light for others. What would happen if every time this Advent you see the throng of desperate shoppers or are caught up in that throng yourselves. So let us be reminded that by grace, Jesus has already provided all that we need for an abundant life. That might lead to a prayer of thanksgiving. What would happen if every time we see an opportunity to give, 
we are reminded that Jesus promised to be the one that was found amongst the least of these, our brothers and sisters. And that might lead us to acts of generosity. What would happen if every time we were tempted to eat yet another Christmas cookie, and I understand there are Christmas cookies next week, so let this be a reminder to you that we have already been fed with the bread of life that might cause us to pause and ponder God's abundant goodness. What would happen if every time we heard a Christmas song, it reminded us of the very first Christmas carol, the angelic announcement that God has come to us in Jesus Christ, that that might lead us to think of ways to be Christ's hands and feet in someone else's life. What would happen if every time we went to a Christmas party and let the crowd around us remind us that these are the very people that Jesus came to save. That might lead us to build a bridge of friendship for Jesus' sake, to share our faith, and invite someone here to join you for worship this Christmas. And what would happen if we took everything that tends to overcrowd our days and fill our senses and make us go into the wilderness and use it to remind us of the one who came into the world, the one we celebrate this season. All of this could get us out of the wilderness and bring us to the light of Christmas, the light that shines in the darkness. And you don't do it alone. Now I want you to take just a moment and I want you to look around at each other. So you're going to turn your head and you're going to move a little bit. So look at the people around you. And I want you to see in each other here in this place the hope of Christmas. As you look at each other and see that God offers us today the good news that through repentance, confession, and forgiveness, God is doing new things here in this place, and God is doing new things in you. Amen. Stand and sing on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry, hymn 249. <clears throat>
words this morning are wrapped around the simple tune that's on in your middle of your bowl. Wake us up, God, to your love, to your glory. Wake us up and find us in the midst of the wilderness that we've surrounded ourselves in. Let us know that your presence is there with us and will be always. Wake us up to lead others from their wilderness into your light and into your love. Wake us up to the needs of others, those in financial pressures, those in relationships that are breaking, those who need healing this morning, especially we pray for Julie Brimhall, Keith Reinhardt, Meg Reidler, Kimberly Beery, Holland, Harlan Sapi, Scott Manns, Monica Moore, and others named aloud now. Wake us up to the needs of your world, Lord. A world that struggles in its brokenness. May they trust the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. May they hear our witness strongly and find hope in that. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share God's love, God's peace with one another. Thanks for being here all morning. that our bell choir brings us and share the good gifts that we brought from home.
I stand and collect his uh, offerings. Let us pray. God of abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you holy and mighty one who comes to us as Jesus Emmanuel God with us with the saints of the ages with the cherubim the seraphim with the hosts of heaven we pause now to praise your name and join in their unending hymn beginning and the end, the giver of all life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. And blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body and it's been given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim together the very mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. Remember our new birth and his death and his resurrection. And we look now with hope for his coming again. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us and bless this meal. May your word take flesh within us and awaken your people. Fill us with your light and bring us the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate.
power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. As one we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the table that God has set. Amen. You may be seated. We'll commune our assistance and bring this meal forward for everyone to eat.
understand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. God of wonder, we give thanks that you have fed us once again with this foretaste of the feast to come. Strengthen us through this gift to serve our neighbor with joy so that all may come to see your glory reflected in the lives of your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. A few announcements before we scatter. One, thanks for uh, being part of Breakfast with Santa yesterday. We had uh, well over 100 kids here. Uh, some of them really enjoyed seeing Santa. Some were terrified at seeing Santa, but, but everyone seemed like they had a good time. Thanks for the volunteers and everyone else. It was good. We have, um, <coughs> we have a notice in our bulletin about luminaries. That's those uh, lights that we put around our building on Christmas Eve to kind of tell the, the neighborhood that the light of Christ is here this evening. Uh, we've had the Barrett family that did it for years, and now we've had the Schmatt family that have done it for years, and, and we're looking for a new group of people. It doesn't have to be a family. Uh, it can be a group of individuals. If you'd like to be part of that or know more about that, uh, it's a nice Christmas Eve tradition, and it speaks well to our neighborhood. So... Uh, let me know or let Suzanne Schmatt know her, her information's in the bulletin board about that. Uh, tonight is the last night that uh, I'm going to be talking about the Sanctuary Renewal Revisions at 5.30, right after the 4.30 worship service. Uh, if you haven't heard that yet, um, there's something posted on the internet about it, and I just kind of expand and clarify and answer questions in the hour that we take about that. Come at 5.30 at Fritz Hall for all that. Uh, Advent Wednesday, uh, Euchre night is Tuesday. Linda Thompson, our administrator, has asked me to say that all morning long so that we get many card players here on Tuesday. So come uh, for that. Bring a dish to share or a snack to share and have fun. Bring some money, too, because they're going to want to take your money from you in the midst of that. Uh, Wednesday night, we always meet for a meal here and then education afterwards. I'm teaching something on... Uh, the, the, uh, the nativity stories in Matthew and Luke. Um, and also then in Advent, we have a, a really pretty Holden's Evening Prayer at 7.30 Advent Worship Service. It's going to be led by a men's chapel chorale. And, uh, and we hear Santa's going to show up in the midst of that uh, service too. So uh, come and be part of that this uh, Wednesday night. Make that part of your, um, your Advent preparations. I, I'll tell you what, it just... It's just a nice, peaceful way to remember Christ in the midst of the busyness of Christmas. Finally, next Sunday, Pink Sunday. It's called Ed Sunday. We light the pink candle. I get to wear my, my beautiful pink robe that I have. Um, and, uh, and, and you, people, we we'll come and wear pink. We celebrate Mother, uh, Mary's uh, gift to the church uh, and being the mother of Jesus. So that's next Sunday. We're also going to be selling uh, cookies for the Joseph's Coat. Our, our members have made really... Uh, beautiful Christmas cookies they promised us. They're going to be boxed up for you to share in the office or for your holidays. Uh, so support Joseph's Coat. And there'll be a congregational meeting before this worship service next week at 1030. So that means this worship service at 11 will probably start about 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late at the most. So a congregational meeting right before this worship service. That is all I have. Uh, there's a giving tree out there for seniors if you want to continue to support that. Great job so far. Please bow your head for a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. And as uh, Brian and Mano are coming up to lead us on this last song, and, and Ernie gets to the piano, um, uh, Bishop, could you come out here? We should, uh, we should give thanks. Uh, our, our bishop has a very difficult job. The church is in the midst of great transition, and uh, Bishop Delahunt is called to, to lead us in the synod in that transition. And so we should show our thanks and praise and uh, thankfulness for her. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being here all morning.
She's going to meet with our leaders now at 12.30 and uh, encourage us in our ministry. Our last song is Soon and Very Soon. Um, and Ernie and Mano and, um, and Brian have done it up a little bit. They're going to like do something at the beginning, so don't start singing until they tell you to, okay? Right? Right. Right. So even though you think you might want to, don't. Here it is. Serve the Lord. Thank you, God. Amen.